humble beginnings to a towering force in the world of technology and transportation, from Indonesia to Southeast Asia. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are Team NFJ from the Kaist College of Business, and join us as we unfold Gojek's road to being Southeast Asia's super app. This case study centers on the challenges and expansion strategies by the company incorporating the founder's point of view, aiming to provide insights and inspirations on the growth of an indigenous startup to a multinational company in a short period of time. This also seeks to answer the question, how did Gojek as a small startup navigate through difficult times to become what is now Southeast Asia's super app? Here's our presentation outline, and so we begin. Gojek is a Southeast Asian multi-service platform that is recognized as Indonesia's very first Decacorn with a 52% market share in Indonesia and presence in three Southeast Asian countries. The journey dates back in 2006 when a young Nadim Makarim experienced firsthand the worsening traffic condition in Jakarta, which is way slower than Olympian Usain Bolt. This traffic condition resulted to an average business loss of 12.8 trillion rupiah per year. And to navigate through this whole ordeal, Nadim used to ride Ojex or the motorcycle taxis, which at that time was disorganized and lacked transparency in pricing. That is why in 2010, while attending business school, Nadim established Gojek as a call center Ojek booking system with 20 Ojek drivers advertising through word of mouth. It was not long after when Nadim took inspiration from Uber and transformed Gojek, making it worthy of its initial funding in 2014. And this funding ignited Gojek several milestones from launching its app in 2015 to becoming Indonesia's first unicorn the year after. Gojek crossed borders when it started to expand geographically in 2018 and received its Series F funding from big companies in 2019. 2020 was the, when the company integrated various markets app into one, hitting more than 190 million app downloads. Moving on to key turning points, Gojek tells a story of how a small startup through constant innovation and scaling found itself to be one of the key players in the industry. Gojek pursued a growth strategy through three types of expansion, business, product, and geographic. Moving to turning point one, Gojek made a bold decision to swiftly expand beyond just right hailing, transform into a super app that provides various services. Accordingly, it can be said that Gojek's expansion of its business scope has been a gradual process with various strategic moves and calculated risks contributing to its growth over time. For business scope expansion, we will be focusing on transportation, food delivery, and payments. In terms of transportation, Gojek motorcycle taxi, called GoRide, quickly gained popularity among commuters who were looking for a more affordable and convenient alternative to traditional taxis, and this was the core service that helped the company establish its presence in the market. However, not as simple as it looks, as a first mover, Nadim faced a number of challenges in the early period when there were no regulations in place for motorcycle taxi services in Indonesia. And to overcome this situation, Nadim worked closely with government officials and regulators to help establish a regulatory framework. And as the service grew in popularity, Gojek expanded to other cities across Indonesia and eventually diversified its offerings to include car rides and other logistics services. And when it comes to food delivery, let's go back in early 2015, when Gojek's driver occasionally experienced periods of low demand. And to help them earn more, auxiliary services called GoShop, which facilitated purchases of various things, was introduced. Surprisingly, food is the most popular orders within GoShop. And seeing this demand, Nadim creates a dedicated food delivery service by launching GoFood. At first, they faced challenges in partnering with local stores and merchants, since traditional businesses were hesitant to join an online food delivery platform due to concerns about impact on their existing operations, customer relationships, and technological barriers. To overcome this, GoFood focused on building relationships, offering training and support, including onboarding and platform familiarization, quality control and packaging, and efficient order handling. 
A school food became popular and demonstrated its ability to push sales for local stores, more merchants saw the opportunities and joined. GoFood marks a significant milestone for Gojek as it creates a more comprehensive on-demand platform for users. With its right hailing and food delivery services booming, Gojek understood the importance of seamless transactions. Nadim consistently held a grand vision of super app and fintech was an integral part of it. He acknowledged his lack of expertise to accomplish it independently, so in 2016, Nadim decides to merge and join forces with Aldi Hario Pratomo, his friend in Harvard, and a founder of a fintech company named Mapan. Accordingly, Aldi became the CEO at GoPay. GoPay is a wallet platform that transformed the way people paid for service within the Gojek ecosystem. GoPay is the game changer and has been challenging the status quo, threatening to dethrone cash as the most favored form of payment in Indonesia. Point number two, revving up the road to heal the nation by doing product expansion to solve social problems. After three main categories, expansion of transport, food and payment, Gojek expanded to more than 20 other services. Two of the products are Golev and Gomad, which bring enormous social contributions. The first one we will discuss is women empowerment. In Indonesia, women participation in the labor force remains low at 51%, compared to men at 82%. On top of that, the traditional housewife duties of taking care of the house and kids hinder them from getting a job in between their time. Here's where GoLive comes in. Gojek introduced GoLive in 2015 initially as a platform for women. GoLive had GoMassage, an on-demand massage service, and GoClean, an online house cleaning service. Both of these services employ mostly women and housewives as service providers where they can work part-time and manage their own free time. As a result, three years later, GoLive employed 15,000 women across 25 cities in Indonesia. They acquired skills and successfully empowered them. It is well proven by its increased average income up to 72% after joining the application. One of the living proofs of this social contribution is Nikma, a single mother go massage service provider who successfully supports her family and sends her kid to school after joining GoLive. This is the picture of her with Melinda Gates during the visit in Bali. However, despite the high social contribution in empowering women, because of COVID-19, Gojek closed GoLive services in 2020. The second product is GoMed. Indonesia struggles with providing access to healthcare. According to OECD, Indonesia only has 0.3 doctors per 1,000 population, very low compared to the average OECD of 3.4. On top of that, 70% of the doctors in Indonesia only operates in the big cities. While in the big cities, there is a severe traffic congestion, which can take up to three until four hours of travel, queuing, and waiting time at both hospitals and pharmacies. Therefore, GoMed came in with medicine delivery to shorten the waiting time at the pharmacy. However, Project does not have enough pharmacy partners to shorten the delivery time. Second challenge is that they don't have adequate funding to build an end-to-end -end online medical platform on top of the transport and delivery services. Therefore, they partnered with HaloDoc, which has more connections across the medical field. HaloDoc added its pharmacy troops to GoMed and it decreased the delivery time significantly up to 30 minutes. As a result, GoMed and HaloDoc now have more than 20,000 doctors, 1,300 pharmacies, and 2 million users. They become one-stop service from online doctor consultation, prescription, and medicine delivery platform. They also became the frontliners of COVID-19 who helped the government to provide house visit PCR tests. So this is the business model of Gomet HaloDoc. Customers start by clicking the Gomet product in Gojek app and they will be referred to HaloDoc where they can choose between online doctor consultations or offline hospital booking. The prescription will be uploaded online and customers can have their medicines delivered to their house by Gojek drivers. Moving on to turning point three, which talks about how Gojek conquered new roads through geographic expansion. In 2018, Gojek allotted $500 million to fuel its expansion to Southeast Asia. But as promising as it sounds, the road had been rocky. Penetrating new markets meant complying with different regulations imposed by these countries and facing strong competitions from brands that are already thriving in the area. Take the case of the Philippines, where Gojek failed to secure a license to operate on the basis of foreign ownership. This regulatory challenge made Gojek decide to make a detour and exit the Philippine market. Meanwhile, in Thailand, Gojek entered in 2019 only to be welcomed by fierce competition, forcing Gojek to sell its operations to AirAsia just two years after. With its back against the wall, Gojek did what it does best turning defeats to resounding victories. 
It utilized the $50 million proceeds from the Air Asia deal to strengthen its presence in the remaining markets of Indonesia, Vietnam, and Singapore. Gojek's success has made it a major player and a reflection of the capacity of Asian businesses to compete against the giants of the West. And the following are key factors contributing to Gojek's emergence as Southeast Asia Super App. First, Nadim himself always had an ambitious vision for an all-inclusive app coupled with Gojek's positive societal and economic impact that attract government support and cooperation in Indonesia. His entrepreneurial journey exemplifies Karya Anak Bangsa concept, showcasing the contributions of Indonesian individuals to the nation's advancement. Second, since 2010, when it first launched, Kojek has capitalized on its agility and the integrated technologies, gaining a competitive advantage as a first mover by effectively adapting to market demands and conditions. Third, Nadim's ability to leverage his networking skills and connection to forge strategic alliance and gain access to resources undoubtedly contributed to Kojek's growth and success. It's worth noting that he was able to secure crucial partnerships and collaboration, including ones with Aldi Hario Pratomo for GoPay and Jonathan Sudarta, the CEO of Halado. Next, going beyond its main product, Project expanded its scale to more than 20 services. Nadim believes in Project's potential in solving social problems such as empowering women, simplifying healthcare access, and so on. And the last one, Project business model is steady enough to be adapted to the new untapped market in Southeast Asia, especially to the countries that exhibit comparable characteristics to Indonesia pre Gojek condition. Here are the challenges Gojek currently faces. First one is the multi homing tendencies. Because of the saturation of the market, intense competition, and changes in customer behavior, Gojek had to continuously innovate, enhance its services, and offer incentives to retain existing users. While the company has experienced significant growth and attracted a substantial user base, they need more strategic efforts to retain users' loyalty and acquire new users in this competitive market. Second, financial sustainability. Pandemic has shown that despite the success and challenges overcame in the past years, Gojek is not yet sustainable. A slight change in customer behavior, such as the pandemic effects, has made Gojek close the entire GoLife products. On top of that, to sustain the operation, Gojek has carried out several waves of layoffs to continue the operation. Therefore, we recommended these two focuses. First, Gojek needs to give more investment in new technologies. Gojek should continuously invest in machine learning and artificial intelligence to compete in this fast-paced era of innovation and to stay relevant with the customers. Second of all, we recommend leveraging the growth of Bank Jago. Gojek acquired 22% of the Indonesian digital bank, Bank Jago, in 2020 and has already integrated its GoPay system with the bank. With this asset, Gojek needs to fully capitalize on the strong market perception of Bank Jago to improve its current financial status and reach its target customer base. In a nutshell, Gojek displayed a story of a small startup defying the odds to become Southeast Asia's super app through a combination of resilience, continuous evolution, and capitalizing on its strengths and opportunities. As what Nadim Makarim himself said, courage is a prerequisite for risk-taking that is a prerequisite for any kind of advancement. You cannot progress without courage. Ladies and gentlemen, let us be courageous, let us be risk-takers, and let us believe in the power of our dreams. That's our presentation for today. Thank you for listening.